story time here at the Sweet Warren County Library System. My name is Miss Becky and today's story time is all about blankets and quilts. You can do a lot of things with a blanket or quilt. You can wrap up on the couch and watch a movie. You can build a giant blanket fort. Hmm. What else can you do with a quilt or a blanket? You can crawl into bed all warm and cozy. We're going to read a bunch of fun stories today all about blankets and quilts. Let's read Mushka, a quilt story. I love this book because blankets and quilts have their own stories. Mushka, a quilt story written and illustrated by Julie Pashkis. Mushka, a quilt story. Carla had an unusual quilt. She called it Mushka. Mushka kept her warm on cold nights and had a nice toasty smell. Its colors and patterns made her room bright and cheery even on the rainiest of days. If there was something scary under the bed, it snuggled tight around her and made her feel safe. But that wasn't why Carla's quilt was unusual. Mushka was different because it could talk to her. At bedtime, Mushka always said, sweet dreams. First thing in the morning, Mushka might say, pancakes. Carla's grandmother had made the quilt from scraps of old fabric that she called schnitz. As she sewed the pieces together, she told Carla stories. If Carla couldn't sleep in the middle of the night, she would put her hand on Schnitz and it would tell her its story. Mushka would go on and on until Carla was fast asleep. Each bit of fabric had a different way of speaking. The yellow Schnitz spoke in a soft, cottony voice. I was a tablecloth at Grandmother's farmhouse, which was all right, especially when something sweet spilled. I was glad to be useful, but once when your Aunt Marjorie was a girl, she made me into a tent and told fortunes beneath my golden folds. Now that was glorious. The blue schnitz had a sturdy voice. Grandpa Will lived on the other side of the mountain. He walked for three days over the hills and asked Lily Jane to marry him. I was the kerchief around his neck. When he reached the apple orchard, he went right up to her and said, I'm yours now or never. And he wiped his brow with me and didn't leave until she said yes. The red schnitz spoke in a cheery tone. When your mother was just your age, she thought she could fly. She made me into a cape and jumped out of the cherry tree. Such fun! I fluttered and flapped in the wind. She broke her toe, but that wasn't my fault. Carla loved listening to the stories. Sometimes she would talk about something the quilt had told her and her mother would say, now, how did you know that? One day, a little white crib was moved into Carla's room. Hannah was in the crib. That night, Mushka didn't say a word not even sweet dreams. Carla could think of many words. Unfair, stinky, my room. 
but Mushka was silent. Night after night, Carla would put her hand on a schnitz, hoping for a story, but Mushka kept quiet. Carla tried to start the stories. Do you remember when you were the curtains in Dad's old sailboat? Do you remember when you were a Halloween costume for the dog? Once in the middle of the night, Hannah started to cry. She cried and cried. Carla squeezed her eyes shut and put her hands over her ears, but she could still hear Hannah crying. Carla got out of bed. She picked up her quilt and carried it to the crib. She puffed Mushka in the air and let it float gently down on Hannah. Sister, said Mushka. Hannah stopped crying and began to sniffle. Carla put her hand on the green schnitz and whispered, this is from the pajamas I wore when I was little, almost as small as you. When I was a baby, I would stand in this crib and crow like a rooster every morning. Hannah was quiet and Mushka was quiet and Carla went on and on. The end. I brought some blankets to show you today that have very special stories. This blanket is very special to me. When I was a little girl, my mom bought this fabric and special markers to color on this blanket and me and my sister and my two brothers colored all over these and then we put them in the mail and we mailed them all the way to our grandparents. They live so far away that we didn't get to see them very often. So this was really special to me. This blanket has a different story. This is a blanket that I made for my daughter. And now that it's all finished, we can curl up on the couch and read books together and watch movies and have lots of fun. This blanket has a different story. I have two kids and when I was pregnant with my son, I made this blanket using yarn. And while I made it, I got to think about all of the things that I was excited to do with my new baby. I really enjoy sewing. So I'm gonna show you how I make a blanket. The first thing I do when I begin a quilt project is I pick out fabric. I have a lot of pieces here, but these are the five colors and patterns that I chose for this quilt. Then I very carefully cut squares. Each side is the same length, and then I put a piece of soft batting inside the squares. I have a lot of pieces to sew. Now, I'm going to use my sewing machine to very carefully sew an X on each piece of fabric. This kind of quilt is called a rag quilt and it's going to have fuzzy soft edges on the top when I'm all done. You can see the needle going up and down very quickly. It's very important that I'm careful with my fingers. And here's a finished piece. You can see the X going right through the middle. I'm excited to finish my quilt. It'll take me a long time to sew all of these squares together. Thanks for coming with me today and seeing how I'm sewing a quilt. This is called No More Blanket for Lambkin. No More Blanket for Lambkin by Burnett Ford and Sam Williams. No more blanket for Lambkin. Ducky knocks on Lambkin's door. They have a play date today. 
Lambkin is hugging her blanket. It is small, it is soft, it is very dirty. But Lambkin never lets it go. What should we play? asked Lambkin. Ducky looks around. Lambkin has books, she has dolls, Lambkin has doll clothes and ribbons and a little toy chest. I want to play laundry day, says Ducky. Let's do the washing. She takes the doll clothes and marches to the sink. Ducky climbs up on the stool. She puts the clothes in soapy water. Let's wash the blanket, she says. Oh no, says Lambkin. I can't let my blanket go. It's just for a minute, says Ducky, and she takes Lambkin's blanket and dumps it into the sink. Lambkin is very surprised. But doing the washing looks like so much fun. Lambkin and Ducky wash and scrub. Lambkin and Ducky play with the soap bubbles. The soapy water looks dirty. The clothes look nice and clean. Off they go, out to the garden. First, they hang up the dolls' dresses and ribbons. Next, they hang up the pajamas and socks. Ducky holds up Lambkin's blanket. It is smaller, it is softer, it is very clean, but now it has tiny holes. Oh no, Lambkin cries, I want my blanket back. Don't cry, says Ducky, we'll let it dry. The sun dries the clothes. Lambkin takes them off the line. Ducky folds them. Ducky holds up the blanket. She ties a ribbon around the middle. She makes a knot with two corners. It is small, it is clean, but it is not a blanket anymore. There, says Ducky. Lambkin hugs her new little doll. No more blanket for Lambkin, she says. Let's play tea party. And they do. The end. I love crawling into a warm, fuzzy blanket on my bed and getting toasty before I go to sleep. This book is called Who Said Coo? And somebody is waking up Piglet from his warm bed. Who Said Coo? Written by Deborah Ruddle, illustrated by Robin Lubes. Lulu's Cottage, Do Not Disturb. Lulu. Pigeon, was it you? But Pigeon didn't answer. Not a peep, not a cheep, not a coo. Lulu headed back to bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody somewhere said, Lulu, owl, was it you? 
But Owl didn't answer. Not a chirp, not a tweet, not a who. Lulu climbed back into bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody somewhere said, Moo. Lulu knew, oh yes, she knew exactly who said moo. Two bad birds, that's who. Pigeon, owl, yelled Lulu. Not one more moo from either of you. Now, shoo. So off they flew. Lulu snuggled back into bed. Everything was cozy and quiet, just the way she liked it, until somebody somewhere said, Boo-hoo! First one boo-hoo, then two. What on earth would Lulu do? Well, she raced outside calling, Pigeon, Owl, is that you? I'm sorry I said shoo. What I should have said was shh. When the boo-hoo stopped, Lulu invited Pigeon and Owl inside for some cocoa and a good night's sleep. At last it was quiet, not a coo, not a who, not a moo, not even one teeny tiny boo-hoo. But soon, too soon, somebody somewhere said, Cock-a-doodle-doo! Did Lulu yell? at you-know-who? Did she holler? Was it you? No, not Lulu. Rooster, she whispered. Could you come back later? Say, around two? Sure, said Rooster. Anything for you. Lulu snuggled back into her cozy bed in her quiet room and snoozed the whole morning through. So did Owl and Pigeon too. And somebody somewhere said, Phew! The end. Thank you for joining me for story time today, and I hope that you wrap up in a blanket and read some good stories. Bye!